What is up guys? Welcome to CWL Premiere Week 2 Recap. I am Bisectatron uh, from One Hive Gazette, once again bringing you guys your official CWL content. This video is going to be awesome. We have some great attacks from Week 2, as well as all the stats with a bit of a different format. A lot of improvements I made since my last video. Once again, here is the Gold Conference, followed by the Elixir Conference to refresh you on the 32 teams if you want to pause the video and check them out. I will also throw up the standings following week one. Those were what we were looking at going into this week. Now things have changed a bit and we will get to that, but that's just how it was going in. Also at the bottom here, you'll notice I'm going to be rolling in not only the results, but also some notable facts uh, towards the end. So that will be going at the bottom of the screen for you guys to check. I'll keep it slow so you guys can keep track of everything that's going on. Speaking of the results though, let's get into our first cluster of them. We have Marshall's Nation taking on Art of War, getting the win 84-81. Now put Nation 2-0, Art of War to 0-2. Dark Avengers with a huge win over Terps win big. A uh, huge margin, seven stars, that's very rare. Uh, Avengers going to go to one and one. A tough loss, but they definitely bounce back in this week. Terps win big, go to 0 and 2 after this loss and their loss to Genesis. We have the battle of the two clans I can't pronounce. D. Uh, Sabazi, Sabazitz and Leichtug or something. 82-78. Uh, LT getting the win, both clans one and one. Finally, Dark Leaders X, three-point park. Uh, 87, 85, both clans doing very well, but unfortunately, while Dark Leaders X will go to 2 0, Three Point Park, despite a good uh, showing, will go to 0 and 2. Let's focus specifically a little more on the Dark Avengers Terps Win Big War with a Town Hall 11 3 star. Definitely a great attack here uh, from Dark Avengers. This is Drew doing a pretty uh, minimally or minimally kill squad based La Loon attack. That's really what we're seeing work, but notice the two clone spells. Very rare. Actually, clone spells initially were what we saw a lot with Town Hall 11s. I uh, stopped seeing that as much, but this one right back with the clone spells using two of them, and you'll see he uses this well. Uh, but this Town Hall 11, I believe the only Town Hall 11 three star in this war, uh, definitely a great job to whenever a clan can pull one of these off because they are still uh, very difficult. But for Dark Avengers, it was this attack, uh, three 10v10 triples, and then 10 scouts from their Town Hall 9s. Really getting the job done with the 9s early allowed them to use those scouts and make sure they were successful, which they were um, with the heavy hitters getting the three 10 triples and then this one triple at 11. So look at those clone spells, great usage there. You can see the balloons uh, in huge numbers making their way through the base and the last air defense goes down right there. Good stuff to Drew, nice attack. And Dark Avengers looking to be a good force here. They are only one and one, but uh, I think they're one of the, the better clans in this league for sure. Unfortunately, Terps win big, has suffered two losses but they should look to bounce back next week and get back on track still early in the season. I uh, can't count any clan out of it yet. Uh, so anyway, good attack there. We'll go ahead and move on uh, to the next cluster of attacks here. Um, another two divisions going against each other. Starting off here with Invictus Prime versus Chosen Elite. Prime getting the victory to go to 2-0 by a pretty comfortable four-star margin. Five Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 three stars uh, with a 55% success rate, which is very high for Town Hall 10 uh, three star attempts. 71% at Town Hall 9, also respectable, and 95% total destruction. Chosen Elite will fall to 0 and 2, unfortunately. Um, 82 stars, not a bad war, kind of middle of the pack in that regard. Um, FYSB versus Genesis. FYSB holds their own against uh, One Hive Genesis. Going 2-0, Genesis falling to 1-1 one one, uh, was a close war, but at the end, FYSB pulls ahead just barely, uh, so good job to them. Sons of Anarchy against Forged from Steel. Forged from Steel with the victory, 86-82, once again a comfortable margin, puts them 2-0, Sons of Anarchy falls to 0-2, and, and finally, 
Fortes LTU against We Are Spartans. Uh, we Are Spartans, despite only 82 stars, which typically isn't a lot, gets the victory there, and they will pull ahead to 2-0, while LTU will fall to 0-2. Let's focus a little more specifically on the FYSB versus One Hive Genesis War as we take a look at a nice witch, uh, mass witch bowler attack with some back end balloons. Uh, very nice attack, but this four, despite being 84-82, uh, which isn't incredibly close, came down to the wire. Uh, One Hive Genesis having, I believe, three Town Hall 11s attacking in the last moments, uh, with FYSB having one Town Hall 11, um, who actually got their attack in a little bit before that. So it was mainly Genesis going for the win. They needed a three star on one of the Town Hall 11s, and, uh, a two, and a three star on two Town Hall 10s. Unfortunately, the Town Hall 11 triple didn't quite fly, about 86%. Now, it was only a one star. The additional two stars it could have gotten is the difference you see in the score. But had that been a three star, which it was very close to being, one Hot Genesis, I believe, would have won on percentage. So definitely a lot closer than the score suggests. But good job to both clans. FYSB definitely looking to be a force this year. Um, they've had two solid wars now, going 2-0, and oh, and they're up there with Invictus Prime leading their division. So I look forward to seeing them continue uh, with some awesome attacks. They had some good Town Hall 10 three stars. This one, a creative attack. Doesn't quite get this Inferno, but you'll see how his troops just push through. We'll go ahead and fast forward this a little bit because these... Uh, you know, there's the Inferno that's still up, just has a tiny bit of HP. There's the Bomb Tower, but just not enough uh, jaded defenses to get these troops down. The King's able to fight through. The Bowler, with that Lava Hound on it, does a little bit of damage before it finally falls to the Lava Hound damage. Uh, very crazy attack here, but good good job. Good planning. Works out for the 3-star. And, uh, yeah, good stuff to FYSB. Genesis looking to bounce back. Still 1-1 one one in solid position. Uh, but that being said, we will go ahead and take a look at some more results. So here you can see the next little cluster of matchups. We had Rogue XI against Pinoy Banditos won, and it was the Banditos that got the win 84 to 83. Definitely came down to be very close, but the Banditos, two 10v10 three stars, which isn't a lot, but enough to get the job done. Both clans now 1-1 one one in solid position in their leagues, uh, or in their divisions, rather. King Jeffrey against Grumpy Old Man. Grumpy Old Man, uh, a very strong force this year. 84-83, again, another close war, uh, but uh, Grumpy Old Man go to 2-0, and oh, Jeffrey down to 0-2. Oh Hindustan also getting the victory and also going to 2-0. and oh. Um, not a clan that I believe is very high profile, but definitely starting off strong with a comfortable win uh, now in week two over Crystal Warrior, who will fall to 0 and 2. Finally, Finland War and Quantum 3. Finland War falls to 1 and 1 after this loss. Uh, Quantum 3, with the three star margin in this war, uh, goes up to 2 and 0. Three Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 triples for them, and six scouts from their Town Hall 9s, which is not the 10 scouts we heard about earlier, but that's still quite a few scouts. Definitely helps out the heavy hitters, so good job there. We will take a little bit of a closer look at the Jeffrey Grumpy Old Men War. Um, Grumpy Old Men visited the clan, seemed like a nice group of, um, of members, of Grumpy Old Men possibly. Um, they getting, um, getting the victory here going to 2-0. This is just one of their uh, many nice attacks. Kind of an interesting Town Hall 9 double jump, double heal uh, combo here with some back end baby dragons and balloons. So definitely kind of a, an attack we don't see quite as much. A nice variety here. Um, but obviously a good uh, start for grumpy old men in this one. King Jeffrey on the other hand, going to have to look to bounce back. Uh, with the 0-2, and, and I think for the first two wars, they can often be discouraging. We see clans, um, or at least we saw clans last uh, season, come back from tough starts, but typically it is difficult to do. There's that momentum that just kind of fades, and it can be difficult at times, whereas 2-0 uh, gives your clan a lot of momentum and I think everything is still up in the air, of course, with only two 
weeks behind us and some very uh, close matchups could have gone either way. I'd say more often than not, it is a very close match that really could have gone either way just by a few uh, tweaks to attacks, getting stars versus not getting stars. Um, we're not seeing that many blowouts so far. And I, I think, you know, we're going to see probably a lot of surprises. A lot of people turn their seasons around for better or for worse, possibly. Uh, but these two clans, one going in one direction, one going in the other. And I guess we'll have to keep an eye out on them as we continue throughout the season. Uh, but taking a look at this one, you can see kind of a back end test. The farm drops the heel on the balloons to keep those guys up. Uh, despite all that air fire coming at them, the baby dragon's doing their job. And right here, uh, his, his attacking queen will step up for the defensive queen, get her taken out with the pop of the ability, and she'll help out as well with a few other things. But that will pretty much do it as we wait for these baby dragons to clean the rest of this stuff up. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the last cluster. Once again, this week actually worked out very nicely with each division uh, playing another division. Uh, kind of a one-to-one -one in terms of division ratios makes it easier, but next week that won't be the case. So lastly, we have um, Pigeonism uh, against Dragon Rejects. Very close war. Pigeonism getting the win. Could have gone either way, of course, uh, but goes one and one uh, for both clans. Uh, both are now one and one in their respective divisions. Jay off, though, with an incredible start to this season, uh, getting it done against Emphatic Fury going to 2-0, and, oh, and uh, just a quick note, three Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 threes uh, for Jay, a uh, seven Town Hall 9 v 10 scouts, and a 94.7% total destruction. So an all-around good job, especially to the Town Hall 9s. Uh, seven scouts, once again, a very solid number to help out the heavy hitters. CZX Knights gets the win over Quixotic Squad, 84-81, a bounce back for X Knights and a step back for Quixotic. Both clans are now one and one after this week. And finally, Valor versus WHF2. Uh, WHF getting the win 85 84. Very close one. Uh, that'll bring WHF2 to one and one. And Valar or Valor down to 0 and 2. So no clan actually in that final wall breaker division. It was kind of that tealish color is actually going to be uh, undefeated or 2-0. and Every clan 1-1 one one or 0-2. Oh so that will do it for the results. Let's take a look at one more attack to highlight one of these wars. This one coming from WHF2 over their win uh, against VD. Uh, this is Silent Assassin with a hog attack. And one thing I loved about this was the use of the hogs and relative to the golems tanking. Drops in a few hogs, gets incredible value, not only in creating a nice funnel for his bowlers, but also just getting some of these point defense out of the way, less damage on his golems, a nice entry up this narrow compartment right here, a ton of value to be gotten from it. But um, you'll continue to see, he really gets the full value of these golems. They do some incredible tanking um, for the kill squad and even more so for the hogs throughout this raid. Nice one hog right there, nice trade on the archer tower. These are the things you want to look for. A few second bounces help as well. They come up to engage the defensive heroes and the lava hound in the CC. Nothing that's too big of a deal. He's being nice and patient on these hogs, waiting for the tanking to be in place for the hogs to be able to come through untouched almost. Uh, so they'll continue in right here. Tesla farm does pop up and unfortunately the golems aren't around but the queen and the wizard and even the bowler can help out right there. And uh, as his troops approach the top, he'll drop in his last few hogs to take out some of these defenses. He has a heal, but I don't even think he has to use it. Uh, so a good job to WHF2. I believe WHF themselves are in the invite league. This is kind of, I guess, their second clan. And they're coming up to 1-1, one one, which actually brings them to the top of the wall breaker division. Um, technically tied in terms of the record with Quixotic Squad and Dragon Rejects. And this will bring uh, Valor uh, Doheris. I don't know exactly how to say that still. My bad, guys, on that. It is week two. I need to get this down. Uh, but they will uh, fall to 0-2 at the bottom of the minor division. So that will do it. Let's go ahead and take a look at some overall stuff as this replay uh, finishes up. We want to look a little bit more big picture and start to look towards next week even.
So starting with the gold conference, here are the master results. You can see Invictus Prime FYSB dominating the giant division, uh, Spartans and Steel in the Goblin, Hindustan the only 2-0 in Balloon, and Quantum 3 in Grumpy Old Men taking the top there in the Wizard division. The Gold Conference appears to be pretty strong, has a little bit more of the winnier teams, I guess you could say. And then for the Elixir Conference, Dark Leaders X up there for their division, Marshall's Nation for theirs, J off for theirs. Uh, those are the only three clans that are 2-0 in the Elixir Conference, uh, each distributed distributed evenly, besides for the Wallbreaker division, which has uh, only 1-1 one and 0-2 one and oh and clans. So that is that for the statistics. You can go back and pause if you want to look at them a little bit more. Week 3, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I do plan on actually doing a projections video, but my, my matchup to, that I want to see is Invictus Prime versus Dark Avengers that you saw there, uh, which is going to be the battle of two very strong clans, even though Dark Avengers is 1-1. One one. I think that should be an awesome war. But like I said, I plan on doing a projections video, kind of a... Uh, power rankings, I guess you could call it. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see just so I can make sure and I should have some some more replays to show and some more predictions for this coming uh, week three of CWL Premiere. But I hope you guys liked the video. I changed a few things up, so let me know what you think of the new uh, kind of format and how we're going through this. Still open to changes as always, so I look forward to reading your comments. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys either in my next uh, upload on my channel, or for some of you guys, my next CWL premiere upload, which shouldn't be long from now. Until then, Bisectatron out.